Time to continue our exciting uh, journey to the world of, world of organelles um, with the cytoskeleton, which it's a bit confusing, I think, the way it's put in the book. You won't be surprised to learn, but um, let's see what we can do with it. So there are three parts uh, to the cytoskeleton, and we'll deal with each one separately. Um, the first one is microfilaments, and the key is it's got the A in it, filaments. Why is that the key? because this is the one that is comprised of uh, the protein called actin. Um, now, depending on when you watch this, if you've already done the A2 stuff on muscles, you'll know what actin is. If you haven't, you won't be so familiar with it. But it, it's um, it's involved in muscular contraction, um, along with another protein called, oops, just say contraction, believe me, uh, myosin. Um, and it's involved in, in sliding past thing called sliding filament theory. Basically the way muscles contract is these filaments of actin and myosin slide past each other. So actin is the key, um, key one to remember for here. It's approximately, you'll see different versions of this. I'm gonna put seven nanometers. I've seen six nanometer diameter quite a lot. Uh, the only reason I'm gonna include seven here is um, seven nanometers is the approximate width of the um, cell surface membrane. I think it's just easier to remember it, uh, but you know, if you put five, six, seven nanometers, you'd be fine with that. It's but seven nanometers approximately uh, in diameter. And it's involved, um, microfilaments are involved in general cell motility. Now, think of the word mobile for a second. Mobile means something that's moving. Motile, with a T, means something that can move itself. So certain cells like uh, amoebas, which are single-celled organisms. These are the things that kind of move around. They live in ponds. They're predators, I guess. Um, and th these little bits can come shooting out of them. So shooting out. It's actually the cytoplasm. These things are called pseudopodia, which means um, basically false feet. And they kind of creep along um, and, and move, and little bits can come out. Um, and that's what we mean by motility. That's caused by these microfilaments um, I'll, I'll talk about how in a second it does that. Um, that's probably the main one to remember for this. Um, what happens here is something... Uh, the, the cytoskeleton is polymer, okay? I mean, it's made up of, of little units of smaller things. We know what polymers are. And what the, the cytoskeleton, or microfilaments, um, and microtubules actually do this as well. They do something called treadmilling. And this is basically the idea that um, they add onto one end and at the same time they're taking away from the other end. So as you're adding on here, you're taking away from the other end. That's what treadmilling is basically, okay? And it needs uh, energy release from ATP. Might as well throw that in here at the moment. Um, and that's what allows it to extend and you know move these things uh, like amoebas around. So that's the microfilaments with our actin, okay? I'll use a different colour for the next one. Um, intermediate filaments. Now this is really, um, I know you might say, hang on, that's got an A in it as well. Well, tough, you'll just have to learn to, to <laughs> deal with it. Um, intermediate filaments, it's to do with the size of them. They're approximately 10 nanometers. The, the other one we'll look at in a second, microtubules are the biggest one. So they're intermediate as in they're an intermediate diameter. Um, and they have a role in cell adhesion, which basically means sticking cells together. Um, so, you know, the thing that actually binds cells and, and, and keeps them together, it's this protein that's involved in uh, making intermediate filaments. Um, it's very good at holding tension. Okay, so stretching forces that are kind of trying to pull apart this cell. Think of things like, uh, you know, cells are constantly under pressure from the, the water inside of them in os uh, os due to osmotic pressures. So that tension, it, it's helping to keep the cell from um, coming apart. You often will see um, this shown as on the inside of the membrane and quite regular structures like hexagons and things. You often see them display. It's not a very good hexagon, is it? But you get the idea. Um, so it sits underneath the cell membrane. It's helping to mechanically give that cell some structure. And it, it's the, the tension one, you know, the tension forces and the important ones there. Um, so it keeps the 3D shape of the cell, helps to keep that 3D shape of the cell together. Um, and it also anchors organelles. What I would do here, by the way, is um, I would keep in mind a couple of 
things to remember for um, each of the the different types of microfilaments, maybe two or three for each thing. Okay. So anchoring the organelles, think of um, say your rough endoplasmic reticulum, which we know, hopefully, sits next to the nucleus, next to the um, nuclear envelope. You know, we don't want this stuff floating off around the cell, not that it necessarily would, but the uh, the intermediate filaments keep these organelles in place um, inside these eukaryotic cells. And I'm just going to go over here to do this one, just because. Uh, our third type are microtubules. Um, and again, this is not a, a too difficult one to remember. The protein involved is something called tubulin. Okay, so microtubules, tubulin. Uh, I know the biggest diameter, approximately 25 nanometers. You'll see different numbers for this, but 25 is fine. Um, these are found in cilia. If you looked at the stuff on flagella, although it's not specifically mentioned in the book, um, you get these things arranged in what's called the 9 plus 2 structure. If you slice through the uh, flagella in a eukaryotic cell, you kind of end up with these three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, seven. No, it's not a very good drawing, you get the idea. Um, kind of looks a bit like that. And these are microtubule filaments. And what they do is they um, they can slide past each other. So one will move up that way and it, it kind of moves the thing backwards and forwards and the flagella ends up whipping backwards and forwards. That, that provides propulsion. Um, so yeah, 25 nanometers, um, we've got cilia. Uh, oh, they're also involved in organelle transport. So things like uh, mitochondria, which might be moved around inside the cell, uh, are moved along these microtubules. These are ones that look act like little tracks. Um, and another crucial one is these are basically what makes the spindle fibres in mitosis. If you've not done mitosis yet, that won't make a lot of sense. If you have done mitosis, you'll say, ah, oh, these are the things that pull the chromosomes apart. Okay. Um, and I'll just throw in here as well, actually, uh, that micro, uh, microtubules, just like um, microfilaments, also do the treadmilling thing. This is how they're able to... When you say in mitosis that the, the spindle fibres pull the chromosomes apart, what they actually do is they shorten at one end, so they get shorter. They don't really pull, they just get shorter at one end, and it, that's what pulls the, um, the chromosomes apart. So technically what it's doing is that treadmilling thing again, but it's doing it just from one end. Um, yeah, uh, lastly, just to say that the situation in prokaryotes, bacteria and so on, is different. They don't have this uh, cytoskeleton structure like the eukaryotic cells do.